All right, welcome back to another video. This one is going to be the stockade boost for uh, Paladin on the Alliance, of course. So level 40 boost. This is useful, you know, for making some gold if you're Paladin. And also, you know, uh, it's, stockade boost is really great for leveling, especially now with the 100% bonus XP that they're giving us. And yeah, been looking for ways to make gold because GDKPs are banned, so we gotta find a way to, you know, make gold now. So the next best way is, is boosting. I don't think they're gonna get rid of boosting. Um, so here we are. First thing we're gonna look at is the talents and the runes. So you're level 40, of course. It's a specific talent build. You need consecration from the Holy Tree. And you're also gonna be picking up spiritual focus in the second row. You don't use this that often when you have really good gear, but if your gear is not so good, you will be trying to heal yourself with holy light, flash of light. So with this five out of five talent and concentration aura, you are immune to pushback, which means you can sit there and just cast and you'll heal. So very useful when you've got a bunch of mobs on you and you need to heal yourself. We're gonna be getting intellect instead of strength because the Guarded by Light rune works off your max mana, and we're going to need, a, you know, more mana because uh, our gear is typically not going to have intellect on it. And then uh, we're going to go down ret because we want the improved retribution aura. There's really nothing you can get down the protection tree. As, as you can see, we can't really make it to this row and get Blessing of Sanctuary, which would be really nice, but you need to get con Consecration, so it's just not possible unfortunately, and the earlier stuff in the prot tree doesn't doesn't do anything, really. So we're going for Retribution Aura. We're going to buy, grab the crit chance, uh, mainly because Divine Storm is how we're going to be healing ourselves and uh, killing things. So uh, when you crit, you'll heal more, which is really nice, and it's melee crit, so we want melee crit here. Uh, we want 5 out of 5 parry, because... Uh, when you parry something, you get parry haste, which means your next auto attack gets cut in half. Just ha You get more attack speed, basically. And when you've got about six or seven mobs in front of you attacking you, you're going to be parrying a lot, and just your damage will go up a lot. So this is going to be a really good talent, actually, and might, because it's all about how much damage we can do. The more damage we do, uh, the more uh, healing power we get from Sheath of Light, and the more our, um, our divine... Storm is going to hit for and heal us for. So that's the talent build. Now, of course, you can really do this if you've got good gear and you're like a level 40 paladin. You don't need to change your spec. You, I mean, if you're if you're deep down right and you don't have consecration, you can't do this. You need you absolutely need consecration. But if you're just running the uh, the holy shock build, which I was running, uh, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So keep that in mind. Next, we're going to talk about runes. So there's uh, three runes that are like totally mandatory. Divine Storm is your main like way to do this. Without Div Divine Storm, you, you can't really do it. Guarded by Light is how we're going to be getting mana back. We're not going Oom, basically. Uh, and Sheath of Light is going to make our Consecrate do a lot of damage. And you know also increase the healing we're going to be getting from Divine Storm. Crusader Strike is... There's just nothing better in, in there to take, so it's fine. It also gives us mana back. It's also just damage, but it doesn't do AoE, so uh, it's okay. And then for the legs, honestly, you, you rarely use Avenger's Shield in here, but there's nothing else. You could go Exorcism, but that'll just kind of oom you, and, and it's really just single target, so... Yeah. But you, you rarely even use Avenger's Shield, so I wouldn't worry about it. The three main important ones are Divine Storm, Guarded by Light, and Sheath of Light. And uh, I'll go into gear now, so I'll switch back into the game. So I'm, I'm in full tier, tier. I got the three-piece tier plate gear, not the leather stuff. I've got you know decent rings. I've got the spell power trinket, and I've got some off pieces from Nomergon as well as the crafted helm. I've got my high tide choker still. My shoulders are pretty bad. I've got the ZG cape, and I've got the ZG weapon. Or sorry, not CG, uh, STV. I get confused because it's like a similar thing. But 
but basically you're going to be you're going to be looking to get your armor value up high so you want mainly plate gear and you're going to be wanting to get you know lots of strength because strength equals spell power and healing power and also increases the damage you're doing so you're going to be healing more and then of course stamina and agility and intellect I wouldn't try to get that gear but if it has it on your gear then that's fine too because critting is really useful for us the main two things here are, are stamp strength so you can really just grab like a bunch of of the bear equipment if you just a fresh 40 and you're looking to make some gold you could probably load up on of the bear gear and do just fine uh, with some auction house gear you don't need raiding gear to do this uh, however if you have good gear you're gonna be able to do it quicker which means you can make more gold so that's always the case with these boosting things. So let's look at the breakdown of the XP per hour. So uh, first of all, the mobs in this place range from level 23 to 26, and the bosses are 26 to 29. And the player levels, so your boosties, uh, they're gonna be level 15 to 31. Anything outside that, it won't work. And I recommend, you know, if people who are level 15 wanna pay you, that's fine, but if you're if you're trying to get into stock boosts, I wouldn't I would wait to go to stocks until you're tw level 20. That's when you start getting the most amount of XP, and I would leave at 28 at the latest and go to SM. But you can stay till 31, and you're looking at anywhere between 60 to 70 thousand XP per hour, with of course the new 100% bonus to your XP gains. And it's, a, it's 93 mobs if you get all of them. And with the Paladin, we are getting them all. With the Mages, they skip a lot of mobs because they get stunned. But they reset quicker and you'll hit the lockout reset. Well, with this run, you'll never hit the lockout reset. You're going to be doing, like, on a good run, with really good gear, like, maybe 12 minutes. And then you would be just hitting five lockouts an hour, I think. Um, but honestly, realistically, when, you know, you're waiting for people to trade you gold and... There's little delays here and there, and you're rendering. So you're going to be doing like four lockouts an hour probably, which is great because you can just keep going. You don't have to wait and log out and come back. Uh, the gold breakdown. Uh, so if you're in here solo by yourself, just, just doing the dungeon with no boosties, you're going to loot two gold every time, just in like raw silver on, on corpses. Uh, when there's five people, you know, of course, you're going to get one fifth of that. So it's, it's around 40 silver, I'd say. And you've got a full full party that you're just going to loot and it's going to cost you at least it costs me uh with my gear including these epic items if i don't die i i burn about you know 12 percent of my durability per run and that ends up being like 15 silver uh, per run it costs me to do this if you die it's much more and you can die i'll get into that after but uh yeah you're gonna a vendor so the way I do it is I loot everything I don't let the boosties loot um, and I vendor all the all the all the shit I get and you're gonna get one to two gold just from that per run and then auctioning off uh, you know the cloth the, the the BOE blues and greens that you get as well as like the gemstones and there's a couple patterns and I've put up some things here on the on the uh, the page here like common stuff that'll drop and you know what to look out for but there's a huge drop table if you want to look on wowhead you can but uh, there are some decent drops in here like the feet of the lynx go for like you know 10 15 gold uh, century cloak same thing these organ bracers are quite a bit for some reason uh, but there's lots of silk and lots of wool you'll get like two to three stacks of silk a run uh, which is you know pretty damn good right now because silk is like is selling um, yeah uh, average I calculated is about 48 gold per hour you can make a little bit less or a little bit more depending on how full your party is and what drops of course but yeah it's it's, it's a pretty easy thing to do and it's decent gold uh, it's almost a gold a minute which is in classic wow pretty damn good uh, unless you're a mage of course so for paladin this is fine uh, you boost for one hour and you've got enough gold for you know, can raid consumes for like, like uh, four to five lockouts uh, if you're buying everything. So, so that's that's pretty good. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm just gonna jump over here for a sec. My friend is boosting me. Oh, he just died. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> a 
that's unrelated, but um, yeah. So let's look at the poll now. So we'll jump back into WoW here. I'll show you the poll. Um, very simple. We're gonna put might on ourselves, and you know we've got all those runes I told you about. We've got our retribution aura activated, and we're going to be using Seal of Light. So what we do is just kind of walk around, gather some mobs up. When you've got four or more mobs around, you start using Mind Storm. We're gonna concentrate on cooldown. And uh, basically you have an infinite mana, so don't worry about um, standing in your Consecrate for its full duration. Uh, a good tip is to bring them into the rooms and kind of move back and forth, that makes them stack. And just slowly pick things up. This isn't like a one pull, like a dungeon or anything like that. The way this works is you're going to be just grabbing like a good clump of five to six mobs at a time using your divine uh, storm on cooldown, consecrate on cooldown, and you're going to make sure you have a seal of light on at all times, and just use crusader strike as well. And of course, you know, as you go, uh, loot, and if you get a uh, debuff on you, this um, infected wound debuff, the mobs in the first kind of corridor and and a little bit on the left side will do this to you. It increases your physical damage taken, which is really bad. Uh, you want to cleanse that as soon as you can. Because we have basically infinite mana from Guards by the Light, uh, don't worry about don't worry about spamming your, your cleanse by yourself. Uh, it's going to be useful. So you can die if you pull too much. Um, that's what your bubble's for. So if you feel like you're going down, uh, especially in the second half where the mobs can stun you, the first corridor and the left corridor, they can't stun you. Um, I think there's one boss that can stun you, but it's whatever. It's not going to get you stunned that much. But um, in the later parts, on the right side, all the mobs can knock you down and stun you. And if you get a bad RNG, sort of like chain of stuns, you can totally die. Um, so your, your divine shield you can use while you're stunned, and that's like your get out of jail free card, right? Deep Bob will heal the full. However, if that's on cooldown and all you have is uh, is your bop, bop can't be used when you're stunned. Um, you have to wait till you get unstunned and then use it, and it's kind of not as reliable. So you you know you want to save your your bubble if you can. So try to bop first and save your actual bubble for later on. And of course you've got lay on hands too if you get really like just bad RNG, but I haven't had to use that yet. So what I typically do is I pull two rooms at a time, and when the first first room is like halfway dead, then I move on to the second room, kind of group them up. But look at my damage done, it's mainly Consecrate and Divine Star. So, I mean, you're not really doing anything else, obviously. Uh, the Retribution Aura doesn't do that much damage, it's doing some damage about as much as your Crusader Strike. So that's cool, but it's not its not that much. So we do the first hallway, then we move down here, and we start collecting up into these rooms. So this one's gonna be uh, a hard pull, because I've got a lot more mobs on me than I did before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go Seal of Light, I'm gonna find a mob that's full health. See, I just got stunned. So I'll put Seal of Light on that mob, and we have Seal of Light Judgment on that mob so that you're getting double the healing. And, uh, oh yeah, see how low I got there? It gets pretty dicey, so I'm actually gonna bubble here, because this is a lot of mobs, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with bubbling. Um, you can throw a couple heals on yourself. They're not gonna do that much because of the guarded by light uh, thing, but it gives you enough time for your divine storm to come back up, and it's always enough to keep you alive. And if you're consecrating on cooldown, the mobs are just gonna die. And honestly, that's fine, because the run takes 15 minutes, so we can bubble twice in this run. Um, I guess three times, but you'd never have to bubble near the beginning. So, don't worry about it. Of course, these mobs run away when they get low, and they can, like, chain pull other mobs. And sometimes you can get a little bit fucked over by that. Always keep your, always keep your back away from the mobs so that you're parrying. That, that, that helps a lot. And uh, you can just, of course, adjust. If you're pulling too much, 
and you're dying and unable to do it, then just just don't pull as much. There's no need to, to pull more. I mean, you're already charging less than mages, so people know these aren't like some runs or discount runs. But it's fine. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they don't care. They're just going to AFK. They're playing on two screens, whatever. So, you know, minimum four mobs, because that's what Divine Storm will hit. If you're only on three mobs, you're actually going to be able to healing less than if you're on four mobs. So, but basically, two of these little corridors is, is a good enough amount of things. I wouldn't go for three. There's just no need for it. Because even if you go super hard with, like, world bobs, I don't know, I wouldn't use consumes, obviously, if you're trying to make four of them, but... Like, if you're trying to do this as quick as you can, all you're going to do is hit the lockout, so who cares. So there you saw, I just got a large blue sack. That'll, that'll sell for a gold. Or close to it on my server. These, these rings are selling for like 30 to 40 silver each. They drop a lot. It's a 1% chance off every mob inside of the, inside of the dungeon here. So, a couple little tips. If you jump, while you, if you jump and you're in the air and you use Divine Storm, the radius of Divine Storm is actually larger than if you just stand still and use it. That's like an old classic um, kind of thing, I guess you would call it. Um, another thing is, like, like I said, you can... Here, I'll pull some mobs and I'll, I'll start healing myself. So you can see. But yeah, you'll see. I'll put on concentration mode and I won't be kicked back at all. I can just sit here and heal myself. And then just heal. Now, of course, you're going to oom doing this. You're not going to be doing as much damage with the retribution aura, but if you need it in a pinch to like heal for whatever reason, that's what you can do. Of course, you can put your, put your aura back on the back. Uh, yeah, you turn your back to mobs. If you're having troubles with it, you can literally put your back into a wall like this. And the mobs will fan out. That's how I used to do the classic pull it. You go to this corner. And if you pull them into the very end of this room to, to kill them, when they run away, the chances of them chain pulling is way lower than if uh, you're just fighting them. Another little tip. Uh, yeah. A uh, couple other things. Uh, there's a vendor right outside the, uh, the dungeon. There's also chests. A lot of them are locked. Some of them aren't. And, you know, chests are good. There's your trade goods in them. You can get, like, Cloud Steel Bloom and some herbs that'll actually sell. I mean, they weren't going to sell for a lot, but if we're talking volume here, if you're doing this a lot, you're going to get a roll over time. So, if something sells for more than 15 silver, like, you're, you're fine. Because you're, you know, it's a lot. But, but typically vendor shit that, like, is under that. But if it's, if it's like, over 30 or 20 silver, I'll put it on the auction. Well. Yeah, you just kind of keep going. You don't, you don't really have to stop. And it's pretty fast. Uh, a couple other things if you're new to this. You don't have, like, so if you're being boosted, you can already boost his ass. They can stand right at the entrance and still get all the XP. They don't need to be anywhere near you. In fact, they shouldn't be anywhere near you in the event that you have to bubble because the mobs will aggro onto them and, and then they'll just die. So, use your cooldowns if you're gonna die. Like, dying sucks. It's, it's not as bad as like a mage who has to go get all their world buffs and shit again. You don't need any buffs to do this as a paladin, but it's a long way back. From Goldshire, and that's where the, that's where the great part is. So yeah, that's that's like two thirds of the dungeon done. I can't loot that. Right there, and uh, you know we're done this wing. We're gonna walk to the other side, and I'll show you the knockbacks, how I deal with those. <clears throat> the left side, you can definitely pull more because the mobs aren't as dangerous. 
Oh, one huge thing I totally forgot to talk about, if you're watching to the end. You need to have a uh, <laughs> weapon chain on your weapon. Otherwise, you'll get disarmed constantly and you won't be able to use Divine Star. And you'll just die. So this is mandatory, absolutely mandatory, that you need a, a weapon chain. That's still so that was the 10 minute mark right there. You know, I am going a little bit slow here. But on this side, I'll just pull one side at a time. I'm being totally honest. Because it's not worth dying. It's just knocked down a million times. And uh, I'll move to the other side. It just got stunned. Look how much, like, look how close I'm coming to dying. Just in, you know, just with like six mobs on me. So, really gotta be careful. On this side. It's still obviously totally uh, yeah. It's done there. At least on this side, there's nothing to dispel. When you're doing the one pulls back in classic, you'd have to worry about spelling and being knocked down and being disarmed. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a shit show. Of course, you're level 60, so you you resist a lot more things. But I'm keep going here. Might as well just finish the run to show you. But yeah, uh, so this is one of the new bosses. This can't be through. Back right Look how low I'm getting. One knockdown. When you're knocked down, you can't parry, you can't dodge. You know, you, you know, I'm pretty sure you can get crit a lot easier too. You get really low. Okay, look up. Look how low I'm getting. I'm gonna have to bubble this. Remember when we bubbled earlier? I said it's no problem to be back up. So I'm gonna use all my spells and then I'm gonna hold light up. Of course, as soon as I'm out of bubble, knock down again. Important thing when you're getting knocked down like this is make sure you keep standing consecration, because because your only relief from it is them getting low enough to run away. So don't panic, just keep doing your damage. And when they run away, you're gonna get get some room to breathe. And they die really quick when they come back to me. See, our man has been pretty high the whole time. And I'm really not playing the best here. Because I'm doing the video. Knock down again. Yeah. Now, if you did want to do these boosts and skip this whole side of it, can do that. You have to advertise it differently. It's less mobs. And the mobs on this side are higher levels, so it's a little less experience. But if, uh, if you keep, if you keep uh, running it over and over again, you just keep resetting, it, it can be better. This Hamhawk guy gets a uh, buff. Um, it's like a little mini blood buff. Be really careful about that. And See, I'm getting low again, so I'm gonna bomb myself. And now I'm coming, because I stopped attacking during the bomb. But you're never doing enough where, like, you're gonna. Well, this is looking kind of good, actually. I'm gonna start attacking mobs. That are like actually health. Runners pulling shit. Do another consecrate. Oh yeah, see that was a big crit? That's which I healed from the crit. So yeah, like um, even with my like very good gear, almost this gear. Okay? This content, but yeah, it's still it's still deadly in here. So be careful, take your time. I suggest um, doing it a few times on your own, which is fine because you'll make gold just doing this. When I zone out, you'll see how much gold I just looted. 
And you can you can run it twice before you need a vendor usually. But yeah, like I have a weapon swap macro and, and like the odd time that I'm going to uh, Divine Storm. Oh, sorry, uh, Divine Storm. Avenger Shield. The odd time I need that I have a weapon swap macro for it. Storm with your one-hander though, because it doesn't it doesn't do dick damage. So it's not gonna heal you. One other tip. And also if your one-hander doesn't have the weapon chain and you get disarmed, you can't switch back to the two-hander till the disarm runs out. And you get disarmed again, and then like you can die that way because you can't divine storm. We've got one little room left to go here. No chests for us this... Oh, spoke too soon. There's a chest. Let's see what's in there. So if you haven't been uh, doing your Azeroth commerce things, you can get a lot of... You can get a lot of um, gold and rep from, from uh, handing those in, and they're pretty common in chests. Almost guaranteed chance. Yeah, there's just two mobs there, so I won't, won't kill those. You guys get the idea. But uh, yeah, I'll zone out and you'll see how many mobs that was. And the uh, the gold, that the raw gold I just got. And if we take a look at the drops here, you know, um, we got 173 wool right there. So that's a gold. <laughs> that's a gold right there and just wool. And we almost got one stack of silk. And it was one gold 75 silver and just raw gold off the ground. So I'm gonna vendor all this. You know, I'll probably keep this. I'll look through here. So anything that's of the bear, of the tiger, or of the eagle, or you know, like attack power, things that are like actually useful, I'll put them up on the auction house. But for the main for the most part, you're you're just vendoring this stuff. Uh, for gold but yeah that's it uh, any questions let me know in the comments it's really easy I just felt like making a video today uh, but yeah have a good time